This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. One third of information security jobs require a cybersecurity certification. While organizations are hungry for cybersecurity talent, the cyber skills gap grows daily. The average salary for cybersecurity specialists is $116,000. ACI Learning's programs can get you certified. To maintain your competitive edge across audit, IT, and cybersecurity readiness, visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. It's time to take a look into the future uh, at what Apple may or may not have plans for uh, at its WWDC, the Worldwide Developers Conference, which Apple hosts every summer. Uh, we've heard that Apple may uh, reveal a new product category, a headset. And joining us today to talk about what he knows is Bloomberg's own Mark Gurman. Welcome back to the show, Mark. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? Yeah, it's uh, great to get you on the show. Um, I am looking forward to this conversation because, so <laughs> I think I was recording iOS today on Tuesday morning, and then I saw this uh, news piece hit, and I thought, oh boy, I got to read through this as quickly as I can and see what's going on. Um, can you start, before we get into the nitty gritty of, of, of what this report is about, let's pretend this report doesn't exist yet. Tell us what the rumors have been up to this point about Apple uh, creating a mixed reality headset. And maybe even for folks who might not know, what does mixed reality mean? Yeah, just to take a step back, Apple sees mixed reality as its next major product category after the iPhone, after the iPad, after the Apple Watch. Mixed reality blends augmented reality and virtual reality. So virtual reality is sort of like an old school Quest or HTC Vive headset from Lenovo. And it's basically very much all encompassing. All you see is the environment within your headset. Augmented reality is the opposite. It overlays digital information and graphics and such uh, over the real world. So essentially like what Google Glass did 10 years ago. Mixed reality does both. And in the case of the Apple headset, you'll be able to twist a dial similar to the digital crown on the Apple Watch or on the AirPods headphones um, to go in and out of AR mode in VR mode, right? And so my story uh, this week is detailing basically the core of the functionality of this device. It's going to be like an iPad or a Mac for your face, the future of the computer, as some people call it. And you'll be able to do your entire workflow, right? Supposedly on this device, you'll have uh, all the core iPad apps. You'll have all the app store apps. Uh, you'll have virtual workouts like fitness plus you'll have gaming. Uh, you'll have a new sports viewing portal, right? So watching sports in VR, like your court side. So it's going to have a pretty impressive array a feature list that's a mile long. And I'm curious which features themselves will mostly resonate with consumers. Uh, one of the core features that they'll be pushing is um, virtual reality FaceTime. So the device has advanced cameras in and out of the headset to sense what you look like and build a realistic uh, recreation of who you are in virtual reality. And that becomes your avatar in the device. So I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing my avatar at least. Yeah. Um so speaking of kind of this new reporting now, uh, we have seen at least virtual reality headsets from several companies and some augmented reality tries in the past. But what is new here is with a mixed reality headset having the ability to kind of switch between AR and VR. And I'm kind of curious, just in general, um, there's been all of this hesitation, uh, sort of some companies have stepped away from VR, AR in big ways where they kind of had an early investment in it. What is it that Apple is doing differently, if they are, that is going to possibly make this a, a, a more popular product? It's hopefully launching from day one, and I say hopefully for them with a very strong ecosystem of apps, there'll be a run up between the announcement of the product and the release of the product. And their hope is that the app store will be filled with optimized apps for this XROS, as they're going to call it. The ability to run iPad apps in the uh, device from the get-go. Um, obviously their privacy standpoint has been key to this. It's a big differentiator from Meta. Uh, they claim to be obviously more private, more encrypted. Uh, 
they're not pushing this idea of living in the device, right? Like some sort of metaverse. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be very tailored to those use cases. So you'll use FaceTime, right? But you're not living in it. Just like you'll use FaceTime on your phone or on your iPad or Mac, uh, what have you. Um, and I think that the AR mode is going to be a really key component of the device as well. Uh, likewise, the external display on the outside where you'll be able to show your your, your eyes and your full face, even when wearing the headset. Uh, so, I, you know, a combination of those things they think are going to make this a real seller. Uh, on the other hand, it's going to be extraordinarily overpriced. Three thousand dollars, at least, uh, or around in that range, two to thirty, two thousand to thirty-five hundred, will fall in there. Um, you know, I, I don't think this is going to do well initially. <laughs> I think that before smartphones, before iPods, um, or before the iPhone, before the iPod, before the iPad, before the Apple Watch, there weren't people saying that we don't need these products, uh -huh. right? I think there was plenty of demand and interest in mp3 players and phones and tablets and, and watches and such nobody's asking for a mixed reality headset nobody wants this thing this is really going to be you know there was always a classic steve jobs line where we want to invent uh products that the world doesn't know that it needs yet right and okay fine he said that was that really true though that the world didn't know it needed an iphone or an ipad or an ipod right these were all devices that fit in to what people were clamoring for. Yeah. Everyone wanted a computer in your pocket. Everyone wanted a, an Apple watch, right? This is really the first time where Apple is going to be bringing something to market that nobody wants. Yeah. Right. And <laughs> tell people on why they should pay big bucks for something that's going to take them out of the real world. And so we'll see how it goes. My personal bet is that it'll probably do well at the, at, uh, in the future, but it's going to be pretty slow and dramatic at the get-go. So let's go to that price. Um, you said, you know, anywhere between 2,500, 3,000, maybe even more potentially. Is the price a, because, okay, so there are different goals kind of whenever you are setting a price. Obviously, you want to make your money back and then some, but it can right. also be a way to sort of um, box out <laughs> a certain yeah. category. Is this such a high price because Apple is um, using it as a means to make sure it only ends up in the hands of developers who want to make stuff for the platform? Is it so that it only goes to those early adopters who are super tech enthusiasts? Or is this just the cost of doing business when it comes to this sort of new kind of, of technology. I know a lot of the technology itself isn't new, but whenever it's all brought together in this one package, that sort of packaging of the technology makes it new. What do we think about the price here? I mean, Micah, that's a terrific question. And the God honest truth from my understanding is that this is, this, and this is going to sound new and surprising, right? Mm -hmm. They're not pricing it at $3,000 in order to lock people out of the market. Okay. They're not priced it at $3,000 to enjoy their typical 35% to 60% margins, which that would be at least for them a good reason to do that. I, I don't agree personally um, as a consumer, but it's actually because that's what it costs to make. Mm. Uh, I don't expect them to profit a dollar, maybe a dollar, but I don't expect them to profit um, anything significantly on this headset uh, from a hardware perspective in the early innings of this device. Whoa. Right. For the most part, they'll be selling these at cost. It's a combination of the very pricey technology, external OLED display, two 4K micro LED VR panels inside, upwards of 14 cameras on the outside, iris and retina scanners on the inside, battery, M2 chip, a very pricey aluminum frame, the cushions, right? Uh, it's going to be expensive. So I definitely think that it's a combination of that plus the low units, right? Price comes down with economies of scale. I don't think that this is going to be scaling at such large quantity where they're able to get the price down to where they want it at this point. A lot of the tech is very nascent. They're having to, to not profit on the individual components as well that go into this thing. So I uh, definitely think that it's going to be a few years before they're really going to profit on it. They're working on uh, two follow-ups already. One is a more powerful version of this initial headset, and one is a cheaper version of the headset. 
I would say this first version of the headset, sort of that pro tier, uh, is using Mac grade components, right? If you want to compare a Mac to an iPhone, whereas the cheaper version would be using sort of iPhone caliber components. So if you want to delineate between an A series chip and an M series chip, for example. I'm uh, super interested in seeing how this plays out. And I totally um, I totally understand what you're saying as far as the, you know, the initial launch is going to be dramatic and kind of quiet as far as, uh, you know, uh, reaction, I'd say, from people who are really behind this. And that is really all about the long tail. The comparison to make is that, you know, Facebook did its thing where it changed its company name to Meta. Z you know, Mark Zuckerberg went all in on this idea of like metaverse, everything. It's the future. It's our 10 year plan. And what are we two years in? Or I don't even know if we're two years into that at this point. But, um, you know, there's an article uh, that someone uh, that Scooter X put in the chat room. Meta reportedly stopped pitching advertisers on the metaverse. Like and it, it's almost like Meta. <laughs> I can feel the regret. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I can feel I can the regret of the it. fact that things have, sh have shifted and this like forward thinking futuristic, like, no, I don't care if it doesn't make sense now. It does then like, I kind of feel them, you know, starting to, to change their mind a little bit. Do you think Apple's, you know, has the potential to suffer from the same kind of impact? I mean, Apple's a different kind of company and often they can make things really successful that were just kind of floating on the top, you know, by anyone else that was trying. What is your thought there? Do you think Apple's capable of that long term? I think Meta was too aspirational. I mean, they changed the name of the company to focus around this metaverse approach. Yeah. They sold the false promise of these capabilities uh, that don't necessarily exist yet. I've been watching the NBA playoffs, as you can imagine, and they have two commercials running. They have a doctor... Uh, diagnosing a patient's knee cartilage and she's wearing these AR glasses and it's basically doing a live x-ray and analysis of this guy's knee. Uh, and then you have the other ad where you have a bunch of firefighters wearing AR goggles running into a burning house or a burning building mm -hmm. and the glasses are sort of showing them where everyone is located, right? This is how Meta is advertising AR, VR, mixed reality. That doesn't exist. No. Right? <laughs> it's Those a things fantasy. don't exist. And yeah. it's, it's it, fantasy, exactly. It may never exist. If it does, it'll be 20 years, right? And so they're pitching a false promise. People are realizing that it's BS and they've completely soiled the market, not only for themselves, but for everyone else. It was going to be difficult enough for Apple to sell people on something that Apple knows that people don't need or want, right? And now on top of it, not only Apple, but everyone getting into this space has to get over the, the hump that Meta has created to really soil the market, right? Yeah, yeah. They took something that people already didn't believe in and made it even less believable. So that's that's a challenge that for, for Apple. Absolutely. But Meta is still going full throttle on this. They're working on five or six next generation headsets already. Uh, I think that this can play out similarly to Android and iPhone, whereas the iPhone will be on the high end and Meta will be on the low end. Uh, that's if Meta gets its act together. I think Apple will be quite successful at the high end. They have so like put it this way. Google is churning out new Pixel phones twice a year already since 2016, and they are not making an impact on the market. And that's Google. Yeah. Apple has three times as much cash as Google. And so like, if they can sustain having a hardware division that's really doing nothing for the company, I think Apple could sustain uh, churning out these headsets until something works. So they'll, they'll eventually get it right. You know, it took a few years on the Apple Watch, but they got it right eventually. Remember the iPhone 3G price cut with the iPhone um, 15 years ago? That helped tremendously. Uh, the other thing I will say is that Meta went 100% into the metaverse. I would say Apple's probably going 5% into mixed reality, right? And I don't think that push negates anything else that they're doing, whereas Meta negated all the good they were doing. I'm not going to sit here and say they were doing a ton of good, but what I'm trying to say is they went full throttle into something when they probably should have uh, made it a core part of their business, but not the business. Yeah. Um, one more thing here. I want to f uh, follow up back on what you were talking about with the pricing. Um, <clears throat> has Apple in, in modern Apple times, you know, since they've had a lot of extra money and have been good to go, not in the times where it was like, oh, you know, what's what's the future of Apple look like? Has there been a product that they were, as, as you kind of think, uh, just 
cutting very close to even and not making a bunch of extra pro- uh, bunch of extra profit on it has is is this an unprecedented thing for them or have we seen this before and maybe it just wasn't as clear as as it is with this product so it's twofold it's unprecedented at the price right uh a thousand bucks and over they're making a ton of profit, mm-hmm. whether that's the iPhone, whether it's the higher end Max. Uh, three products that I will tell you that cut close here, uh, but it's not an apples to apples comparison. The lower end Apple watches that they're selling at what, 200 bucks, mm-hmm. probably getting close. The Apple TVs for sure, right? For sure. Um, if you remember the $99 Apple TV pucks mm-hmm. in 2010, for sure. But like these Apple TVs today, they cut the prices, they're getting fairly close. Uh, and then the HomePod Mini, they're probably getting pretty oh. close too. Their corporate average for margins, I believe, is is about thirty seven and a half percent. And I would guarantee that those three products fall below the average. Um, and the Apple TV closer to zero, and the HomePod Mini probably closer to ten percent, right? But in terms of a three thousand dollar caliber device, yeah. Now there's a totally different direction Apple could choose to take this, right? There's a scenario which I think is unlikely that this device costs $3,000 to make and they price it at $2,000 and take it as a money loser to try to get the category going. I don't foresee that happening. It's also possible that they have been able to get the price down now that they're mass producing it uh, significantly, right? It's possible they've maybe gotten it down to $24.99, right? That seems likely to me too. So uh, we shall see, right? I would be surprised if they announced the price at WWDC. I think maybe they don't announce it until it's a little bit clearer toward end of year when they're actually shipping it, uh, how things shake out once they're getting these things produced. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Um, I said that was the last question, but I do have one final question, then we'll let you go. Um, And it's about, in in your piece, you kind of talk about how Apple is almost taking a a two-pronged approach here. You've got this sort of productivity uh, mindset where they really are trying to make sure that pages, numbers, keynote, all of that is available. And then the gaming uh, activity uh, area where you can play games on it, but you can also do workouts and meditation. And you talk about a dial of switching back between AR and VR. Um, Do you think that Apple sort of from the get go had this mindset in in play or is this a way for Apple to sort of um, spread out the risk and make it so that you know, if somebody wants to use it for productivity, it's there for them. If somebody wants to use it for this, it's there for them. I guess what I'm saying is you think about the Apple watch when it first launched the most personal device you'll ever own. And it was about the heartbeat on your wrist and all this other goofy stuff. And then it just became almost uh, exclusively it's an activity tracker. It's a health uh, device. And they didn't necessarily have that as the main uh, scope. Here, you see them looking at two main scopes uh, from the get-go. Is that a lesson learned or is it just, you know, they want it to be both productivity and play? Look at this. I have a story actually coming this weekend on Sunday exactly on this topic. Ah. If, if you'd like, we can have me back next week and I'll go through it once the story is out. We can talk all about that if you want. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, I'd love to have you back on then. And uh, after you've got, you know, sort of your analysis figured out, Uh, Mark Herman, thank you so much for your time today. I look forward to hearing more about this. Of course, folks can head to Bloomberg uh, to check out your work, but uh, let us know where they should go to keep up with what you're up to. Yeah, Twitter is great. Twitter.com slash at Mark Gurman or Bloomberg.com slash power on to subscribe to my weekly column. Uh, it was awesome being on here. Can't wait to come on again soon. Awesome. Always a pleasure. Always love to come on. 